Hey, this is Jay. This is RJ. This is Jason. This is Bibi. And we, we are the Grand Inquisitor. And, and you are listening, listening to Music Existence. Welcome back to Music Existence, where because of music, we exist. I'm out here with Grand Inquisitor. Please introduce yourselves. Hey, everybody else. My name is Bibi Knox. Jay Minish, guitar. RJ, bass. Jason Mooney, drums. So tell me about uh, your influences and how, when you were growing up, how those influences helped shape your sound. Well, I, I grew up with uh, a bunch of older brothers and sisters listening to, you know, some classic rock, Aerosmith and ACDC and stuff like that. So from an early age, I was listening to a lot of that stuff. And then uh, from there, I, I uh, kind of got into heavier stuff, just kind of got into school, started meeting people who were into some, you know, Iron Maiden, Anthrax, shit like that. And... Uh, Pretty soon, that's pretty much all I was listening to. And then I uh, one day I picked up a guitar, decided I wanted to do that. It seemed like something I could have a lot of fun with. So obviously, I wanted to just play the songs that I listened to. So I just started learning all that shit and uh, learning as many heavy metal songs as I could. And here, uh, I guess I am 25 years later, uh, still at it. What about me? Okay. <laughs> I guess, well, I started, you know, watching the, the, the classic and, and all bands, you know, the old school. Uh, my mom was listening to that, so I was started to listen more. Uh, my brother then started to listen to Black Sabbath, you know, the Purple Rainbow, and then later I just continued to listen more and Madison and stuff like that. And, and I found out, like, okay, you know, I will play one day, one day, one day, they band came middle. So, yeah. Well, no, a bass player, all right. So right, right. So, yeah, what about you? So, uh, I listened to a lot of different kind of music growing up, uh, anywhere between smooth jazz to, to metal, uh, and that kind of uh, influenced me as far as uh, what I enjoy playing and what I enjoy hearing when I do play the bass. Uh, I picked up uh, instruments at a young age, and uh, I found the bass when I was about 13, and haven't looked back since. What about Jason Learning, our drummer? Well, I, uh, I came to metal primarily through thrash. Uh, like most 13-year-olds, my introduction was Metallica, and I wanted to seek out anything and everything that sounded like that, so I was very quickly... You know, uh, picked up on Megadeth, Overkill, Anthrax, all of the old school bands, Testament, and it just kind of grew from there. Um, you know, I uh, decided to check out some heavier stuff and got into death metal and black metal for a while, but really my passion has always kind of stayed with classic and thrash metal and, you know, come full circle as a drummer to, to play this style of music. Nice. Now, what can you say about your important takeaways from previous bands, and how do you incorporate that into Grand Inquisitor? I guess I'll go first again. I'll go first again. Well, I've been in a bunch of bands. From an early age, I, I knew I was, I mean, these bands were practicing only once or twice a week. I got seven days, so I want to be in as many bands as I can. So I was in three or four bands at a time, just learning as much as I could. I mainly took so that meant I played with a ton of people and uh, more than playing songs off of uh, CDs and stuff that I had just learning from all these people that I played with everybody's got a kind of a, something unique about the way they play and I was always really into learning what I could and emulating that as much as I could and making that part of me so just all these different bands and different styles that I've been a part of has really helped me a lot and I feel like it kind of made me well rounded Go ahead, RJ. Beat that shit. Yeah. Uh, well, that's not going to happen. <laughs> so, uh, well, you know, I, I really don't know how other bands have influenced me other than the things that, uh, the little nuances of different things of the different types of music that we did play and we did listen to. I enjoyed those and I want to try to incorporate little things like that into 
the music to give the audience something to listen to and not just the same old same old. I like change, I like different sounds, and I like good grooves. And I, did, I think grooving is one thing that I have really learned a lot from the other bands. It's really cool, you guys. Well, for me, um, as a drummer, I, I have been in a lot of bands over the years, and you know, played melodic death metal, played you know, just your your typical old school death metal. Um, but as I mentioned before, I've always kind of gravitated back to thrash, and the key to that for me is is really just trying to pair with the best guitar players I possibly can. Um, you know, that high level of musicianship has taught me about more about composition and structure and, and and just how drums sync up with guitar and how you have to have that precision in, in heavy music making sure that, that you know as Jar rj said you have a nice groove but you also are locked in so when you're going fast it's tight and, and precise and you know um definitely sounds uh you know clean so, you know, that's just the key for any musician is reach out to the best people you can find in your area and, and, and you know, if they're better than you, that's great because they're just going to make you better. Yeah. Never stop learning. And exactly. speaking of uh, reaching out to the best people you can find, how did you guys all find each other? Well, well, well. <laughs> I never, I never finished thinking I would have again. Event. Always, I want to have again event. I had before in Mexico, so when I come to USA, I was thinking, you know, I want to have the event again. Hmm. So I started in one group in in, uh, in Facebook about musicians from Northwest Arkansas, and as well now I, uh, me and, and Jason, my drummer, we just found out and start talking because he was trying to do the same. Me too. So. This is what we started. Uh, of course, he have all the friends there, you know, RG or J, you know, they have everybody else under there. So, right? That's really cool. And it's awesome that you guys found each other. Now, speaking about your new EP, um, Directorum Inquisitorum, uh, how did that come about? Well, uh, Jay came to me, uh, he knew that I was not in a band a at the moment, and he came to me with four or five tracks that he had been working on, and um, and showed me, um, you know, kind of the raw versions of, of what eventually became the songs on the EP. So uh, those, those songs were, were the first four, you know, out of four or five that we wrote. Um, we've, we've written several since then that we haven't recorded yet. Hopefully we will later this year. Um, but, uh, yeah. Um, I've known both these guys for years. I've been in s several bands with RJ, and I really trust him as a bass player. Um, Jay is somebody that I've known in our, our music community for a couple of decades now and just always wanted to be in a band with him. Um, and so when he became available, I was like, yeah, i, I got to do this. And like we have nine, we have nine songs ready to go tonight, and another say nine or ten that we just haven't really worked out. But we've got them pretty much done, other than just getting them all kind of hashed out in the rehearsal space and getting them ready to go. So we've got a lot of songs we're ready to kind of get out there, put on a full length album, and uh, you know, see how that goes. As far as production, how did you guys handle that? Uh, we have a friend uh, named Jim Smithson who has a, a home studio. Um, he calls it Vulture Vomit Studios. Um, but it is very, very high-end equipment, and he's a very polished, experienced um, producer. And, uh, you know, again, somebody that I've known for many years and, and watched him evolve uh, his abilities to mix out good music. So I just knew going in that we were going to come up with something pretty decent. Um, we didn't actually expect that it sounds as good as it does. It's, it kind of exceeded our expectations in, in quality. Um, so we're very satisfied with it. Jim did a great job. And uh, as far as uh, songwriting for the four tracks on the EP, um, do a track by track on each of the four songs. Tell me what it's all about. Yeah, thank you again. Well, let me, let me see. The first one. 
is it came from the deep. Now, first of all, our drummer is our lyric writer. Yeah. And he's gotten all that he's gotten all that taken care of, and everyone has really brought a lot to the writing process because it wasn't anything other than an idea at first. So, but I'll tell you about how kind of that came about. Just basically, uh, I'll come up with a couple of riffs that go together, and then just kind of sit and play those until something else comes to me, and then. Uh, Basically, if it all kind of writes itself and it kind of comes together real smoothly like that, I know that it's it's probably a pretty good song. And I, then I bring that to the guys and the girl here and see what they think, and then we kind of take it from there. But that's the first song. So the second song is "Poor Long Hope." Basically, same thing. I came up with that first riff, and then I had that sitting around for a long time. It was on my phone. I'm one of these people that goes to their uh, their voice memos on their iPhones and just kind of. So it's got like 700 bullshit tracks on it and then so i've got had that on there and i was going through looking through my old stuff because I came into this band and this thing was old so i found that and then so i had two riffs ended up putting a few more together on it and so that one came together pretty good and then we've got uh stygian tomb dust no just St- stygian, stygian, stygian tomb, tomb. that was the original title but we we just shortened it Yes. Yeah, and that's the carry. That's the carry a single, right? That's the first single you released for this. Correct. And so, pretty much the same deal. Just kind of the the verse and uh, chorus seem to go well together, Uh, and it it and it's one of our shorter songs, so it was it kind of went together really fast. And then we have altars to the sky, which I've had the longest. It was one of those that I kind of in my previous maybe two bands ago I was like what do y'all think of this and they were like no (laughs) so I think I kind of at that point needed to change bands because I really liked it and I need to find some other people that kind of like the same stuff I do and uh but that's the kind of the riff side of it I'll let Jason talk about the lyrics right um so it came from the deep is the opening track and that song is basically about someone who's the lone survivor of a sea monster attack and he's telling the story of how he somehow miraculously evaded this you know being eaten alive by the sea monster and he's warning the audience about it and then the second track forlorn hope is about uh you know the peninsular war or the war of 1812 or one of those kind of old um you know a couple centuries old wars musket era wars where um they would be ready to siege a fortress and they would have they would take you know volunteers except they weren't really volunteers they were kind of forced into the duty of being the first to charge in and try to breach the walls or breach the, the gates and charge in it and take the walls so that the rest of the army could come in and that was called the forlorn hope because almost everyone in that initial attack would be killed and then um stygian tomb is about some explorers that go into an ancient Egyptian tomb or mausoleum, and while they're there, they discover some kind of you know mummy or horror is is, is awaiting them. And then the last track, "Altars to the Sky," is about Aztec human sacrifice. Uh, it's a pretty plain and simple song, but uh, you know, kind of from the perspective of the of the priest preparing the victim. To, to give their lives and the justification of, of why this is necessary to satisfy the gods. Mm-hmm. And to follow this up, you're doing a, a full length, is that right? Uh, yeah, we hope to start working on that at some point later this year. We've, we're, we're pretty committed the next couple of months with shows, but we're going to try to slow down later this summer and, and start figuring out which tracks we're going to put on the next, the next album and uh, start rehearsing those and, and getting everything polished up and ready to go. Mm -hmm. So are these tracks going to be incorporated in the full length in any way? Or is it going to be a completely uh, new slate, start fresh, you know, all new tracks? I think we're still debating that. Um, I I personally would try to, like, record as many new tracks as possible. And then if there's room on the EP, I mean, if there's room on on the full length, we'll... You know, we might throw one or two songs and maybe add a little bit to the mix. Um, some things that we didn't quite get to on, on these versions. But um, overall, you know, with as much material as we have, I think we're, we're ready to, to try to put some, as much new stuff out as we can. 
And uh, would you say that the bond between you guys has gone a lot stronger since you formed? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, go ahead, I, would, I would say yes, and you know, like, like Jason said previously, I've been in a couple bands with uh, Jason, and uh, you know, we, we really hit it off as far as uh, having the same ideas as far as, as the direction that we wanted songs to go. Um, and Jay, as well, you know, I've known Jay for a couple decades now, and uh, and when Jason had come up to me, the idea of this band. I, I had to jump on board. There was, there was no, no way fans or buts about it. But uh, I think, as, as, as mentioning the tour, and everything, this is one of the reasons we're, we're, we're doing this. As this is a big bonding thing. We're, we're, uh, we're out on this tour not just to kind of expose ourselves to as many audiences as possible, but it's, it's a really good bonding experience for any band to do. We've been looking forward to it for a while, and hopefully we'll do a lot more stuff like this because... Just, you know, doing our usual rehearsals, that's one thing, that you, you see each other for a couple of hours at a time. Spending all this time this close together really does a lot for the bonding of the band. Considering your career trajectory thus far, what have you learned about yourselves, both as musicians and as people? That's a very big question. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to let you answer, Jay, please. Well, um... No, I mean, I've, I've, lear I've learned mainly through just age, I've learned to be much more patient than I used to be and much more willing to accept just others' input and, and just really kind of sitting on that and seeing how that goes. And that's worked out really well. So I don't know if that's just age or just being in a, this band in particular or what, but uh, I think that's one great thing about this this band is that we're all very easygoing when it comes to just ideas and everybody's we've had zero fights or anything like that we just kind of talk about stuff and then we'll have kind of disagreements and everything and work it out so i guess we've kind of grown in that way but i don't i don't know if that's just the band doing that to us or that we're all just kind of past being immature little jerks <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, I, I think that we, you know, we are all older, and we, we have previous band experience, so we've kind of been through the the mill of, of egos and and balancing people's lack of interest or lack of direction or whatever. Like those people have fallen by the wayside in our in our musical history. So everybody here is very committed. We talk every day. I mean, we're we're not just hanging out at band practice and that's it. We may not see each other in person. But we're in a band group chat, and I mean, we're on there every day talking to each other, cracking jokes, talking about ideas, planning for the future. So it's very interactive. And I think everybody understands that even if we have a different point of view or a different idea, that person is coming from a position of, of love and interest in the band. So it, it's not it's not a harmful or intent or a you know misguided thing. It's they they genuinely want to contribute. So it's just a matter of kind of figuring out how to compromise and how to how to get those ideas in line so everybody gets a little of what they want. Every, every one of us being so eclectic that we are, it does take a second for us to come around and, and kind of own our ideas and see, see what works. Yeah. You just like to play, you know? You with too much play around. Everybody has a very good mute most of the times. You know, we say stuff very clear also. Whatever you want, we want to say, we're very clear, everybody. Yeah, it is here, you know, communication. Yeah, I guess, um, well, with age does come wisdom. And I guess the primary takeaway is you're in this band because you want to be, not just because you're able to be. Exactly. Absolutely. I mean, we have, yeah. we have lives. This is, and this is a huge chunk out of every one of our lives that we're sacrificing. So we... We really wouldn't be doing it if we weren't, you know, all in as far as uh, committed. Yeah, and uh, what are you guys looking forward to playing this tonight's show? Well, first of all, the Brass Mug's pretty cool. That's like the legendary place that uh, that we have the opportunity to play. So that's that's one of the main things I'm looking for. I just like enjoying the, enjoy the people, you know? I like how the people enjoy the shows. I enjoy playing for one person, for a hundred person. I don't care. I just like to, to rock, you know? 
Yeah, nice. Now, lastly, anything you'd like to say to your fans? Just, just keep supporting us, you know. We, uh, we, are, we try to be very interactive with our fans and meet everybody and, and get to know people and talk to people. And so we, we want to give, you know, our, our, our fans the best experience possible but also feel like they have a, a real connection with us as people. Talking about that, yes. Uh, I want to say even uh, over this interview, thank you for everybody else, really. I'm very grateful. Uh, ben is very grateful for everybody who is following us from different states here, from USA, from also different uh, countries too. Uh, they follow us, so yeah, we are honored for that and, and grateful.